Hey, I'm Jennifer Benson with the band Ignescent, and you are watching Chana 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 Podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of my podcast. Uh, we have a special guest today joining all the way from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, we have Jennifer Benson of Ignescent. Hi, Jennifer. Hey, how are you? How are you doing this evening? Doing good. Doing good. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. So how's the situation, Jennifer, there in Chicago uh, with the COVID and uh, with the new president and everything? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit crazy. A lot of things have been locked down since November, hmm. but um, like the restaurants and, um, and other things, the gyms have been open. So um, um, but I found out Monday, actually, some of the restaurants are starting to open back up. And, um, so that's kind of exciting for some people, though the schools, um, a lot of them are still just all online. So that's, that's, you know, been really hard for the kids. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, some are going, uh, like a hybrid schedule where they go twice a week. Um, but I don't know, you know, I'm not sure what else, what's going to happen in the future, but I know, and then I saw an announcement once, um, at least in our state, cause it's different from every state that um, in our state, I guess once they go to phase four, which they're saying hopefully in the next few weeks, um, then the kids can start doing sports again. So um, so that's kind of what's happening, but <laughs> we'll just kind of take it day by day, see how it goes. But it's not, it's not as bad here as it is in some other states. <laughs> right, right. So how, when did you guys uh, perform live last time? Last time we performed at the Forge in Joliet, Illinois, and we performed in October, actually. Right. Um, it was right before things started shutting down again. And so we got in like right, right when that happened, right before, so which was kind of amazing that that worked out. But um, so, yeah, we actually performed with Adelita's Way. And um, that was pretty, it was pretty cool. Obviously, it wasn't, um, it was a limited capacity um, mm. show, obviously. Um, but yeah, but at least we got to do that. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so Jennifer, can you tell me a little bit about your childhood and your like earliest uh, memory of music? Yeah, let me see. Um, well, I always loved music. But, and then, you know, I would always be kind of humming a melody and everything, but honestly, growing up, I was really more into dance. Like I took jazz, I took ballet and I just loved dancing. And then when I hit 15, um, something changed and I just started taking singing lessons. My friend was taking lessons and I'm like, Ooh, that sounds kind of cool. I want to try that out. <laughs> and right. um, so I started taking singing lessons and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I love this. I started doing like recitals and uh, doing like contests at high school or at my high school at the talent show. And I kind of, at that point, I'm like, um, I think I just want to put dancing on the side. So I kind of just stopped doing that and just, uh, focused on singing and songwriting and I also uh, started leading worship at my church too so I would sing at my church um, and yeah and any chance I got I would just sing and I loved it so <laughs> right <clears throat> so what were your like favorite um, music when you were growing up um it well it kind of varied like I loved pop artists um I loved, um, well, like Madonna and um, all those kind of artists. Um, and um, later on, I loved heavy metal and hard rock and um, different bands like Flyleaf. Um, they're, mm. I love Flyleaf. They're a huge influence. Uh, Skillet. Um, I would, um, yeah, I'd also, also listen to them. Um, and then some older stuff too, like uh, Metallica and all that kind of, you know, stuff too. I love, I just love anything that's like heavy and metal and uh, in that kind of style. And then uh, now I've gotten into a little bit like ginger, like I can't 
necessarily scream like she can, but a little bit, but not like she's amazing. And um, I think that's, that's like her forte, but I like to, you know, sing too. But um, yeah, I like that. I love Ginger. I, um, what other bands? Um, I like softer stuff too, like Paramore. I love Paramore. Right. They're an amazing band. Uh, Destiny Potato, that's kind of cool. I've recently got into them. And Black Veil Brides, actually, just recently, or in the last few years, I've gotten into them a lot. Um, but yeah, anything heavy and um, energetic, like gets your blood flowing, I love. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, Black Veil Wipes, I think I, I really love the now, the how they look like and how they perform. Be before, they were kind of like comical at the start, but now they look very awesome right uh -huh. <laughs> yeah yeah i love that have you seen their newest video i think it's um something cross i can't remember oh scarlet cross right right but um yeah i love that well the way they're dressed and everything yeah it's so cool <laughs> right <clears throat> so uh you you uh, did you perform in any other bands prior to starting ignison um i well, just one other, but it was um, a band I started called Jennifer Benson and the Mission. Right. And so that was around for a few years. And um, then the members kind of went their own ways. And I decided um, I wanted to kind of um, change the band name, uh, you know, just do something a little bit different. And um, so, yeah, that was honestly, that was the only other band I've been in. Um, and I started that one too. So that's, um, yeah, that's mainly what I've done. But uh, when I started Ignescent, we were really blessed. We got to work with a producer called G uh, Travis Wyrick and that's um, who produced Calling Out to You. Mm. And um, that was the first song that came out from Ignescent. And uh, also got to co-write with Ben Casca of Skillet. Um, with that song calling out to you. So that was, that was like when a lot of things started and um, kind of started blowing up a little bit more. And so. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I mean, when you, when you are naming the band, uh, what was the thought behind uh, putting the name Ignison? Mm -hmm. Well, honestly, I just, um, well, I, I prayed about it um, for like guidance on what to name it, honestly. And then I also started looking through the dictionary mm -hmm. um, and I just kept going through, like I started the A's, B's, C's, like I just kind of flipped through and got to the I's and I saw this word, it just kind of jumped out at me, ignescent. And I'm like, whoa, I wonder what that means. And so I looked and it means to ignite and mm -hmm. I thought that was perfect because it's just to um, to ignite people's hearts on fire with music and with a positive message. And I just thought that was like just the, the best word and I've never heard of it before. And I'm like, this is it. We got to name it Ignescent. This is, this is it. So that's kind of right. how it happened. Right. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of also meaning like uh, spark, right? Like spark, uh, maybe spark joy, yeah. spark. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, sparks. Yeah. Right. So uh, who's currently in the band? What's the who's the in the lineup, uh, Jen? Uh, well, I'm the vocalist, obviously, and then Ian Sebastian. He is the bass guitarist mm. uh, for Ignescent, and he is actually um, his family is from the Philippines. So um yeah he's oh, I was telling you about before so yeah uh, yeah he's amazing he's like he's the coolest person in the world and then uh Jose Jimenez is the lead guitarist um for Ignescent and um his family is actually from uh, Mexico and then um Ben Silverman is the drummer and his uh family on his dad's side is actually from Israel so um but yeah, and then me, so just the four of us, and uh, we've just been uh, writing a lot of songs lately, so it's been it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> right, right. So it's it sounds very international. <laughs> yeah, which I love. Yeah, I love. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> um, and um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So how would you describe the sound of uh, Ignison? Um, I describe it as 
like hard rock, um, a little bit maybe genty, mm. um, a little bit metal, like um, our latest song, Exodus, which was released in October. And it was uh, produced by Jeremy Valentine of New Year's Day. And he mm. actually was is featured on it. He did some of like the background vocals and, and screams and all that. Um, but that was the first time that we wrote a song on eight string guitar. And so we've been kind of experimenting, doing a little bit, um, a little bit different things and going harder, honestly, like um, harder and more metal, hard rock. So right. that's kind of, yeah, that's how, how I describe it. And then some of our songs, um, Jose will scream in. Um, I do a little bit as well of screaming, but but he's really like, he's really good at that. So he does that as well as the guitar parts and, and all that. <clears throat> right. So uh, I, I noticed like your songs, uh, you're, you're trying to bring out a positive, uh, you know, some sort of a positive message and um, <laughs> related to the faith. And uh, uh, do you consider yourself as a Christian rock band? Um, yeah, we do. We do consider ourselves Christian, a Christian rock band, just like Skillet mm. um, and the Letter Black and uh, many others. Um, uh, but we, you know, we write our songs so that, you know, everyone can kind of relate to them. But, um, but we want, you know, to bring a positive message and encourage everyone that God loves them and, and just bring that positive message to people. But we also, like, we play everywhere. We play at bars. Um, we play at, like, we played at um, Rockfest in Cadet, Wisconsin, uh, Vans Warp Tour. So we play non-Christian fest, you know. Mm. Um, but we also play Christian fest, too. Um, like, we played at Life Fest in Wisconsin and Heaven Fest and, um, and at churches. So we kind of play everywhere and, um, and do it all. But... But yeah, we definitely consider ourselves a Christian rock band. So. Right. Because w w the reason I like I got noticed uh, about you is because I saw the Exodus video uh, in Facebook. I some sort of a promo or something. And then I went and checked the YouTube video. And um, I, at first, I didn't thought that it's like probably not. I didn't thought that it's a Christian band. Like it's a, I mean, it was, it was so good. It's uh so I think you guys are doing something where you're actually bringing this message to more broader audience, uh, right? So it's it's very successful. That's why, that's why I really like about your your music. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> um, so Jen, I um, how important uh, to you uh, the faith? Uh, extremely important. That's honestly uh, why I started the band um, is because of God and um, he's changed my life. Like when I became um, 15, I became a born again Christian. So I just, I grew up Catholic mm. and, um, and someone shared uh, Jesus with me because um, I always thought like good works uh, would get you to heaven and just being a good person overall, you know, um, and I think that's a pretty common belief, but, um, someone shared, like took me to uh, church and start sharing like Bible verses with me, like John three 16 mm -hmm. and Ephesians two eight and nine, where it says it's not of good works, but by faith that you are saved. And in a verse like to, um, that says to all who have received him, they will become sons and daughters of God. And, um, so I just decided when I was 15 to accept Jesus and follow him with my whole life. And um, along with that, I wanted to partner that with music and um, and just share God and, and Jesus with people through music and and um, and just encourage them and you know and pray for them and just love people because mm. I mean this world is, let's face it it's rough it's even rougher now <laughs> you know right. it's it's a really rough world and so I just um, I I feel like God is. I guess called me to do that because I want to, I want to help people. I want to encourage people and God's done so much in my life. Um, it, it's just been incredible. The things that he's done and all the answered prayers and that I just, um, I love him so much that I want to share 
that with others and just fill them up and encourage them and not in a judgmental way. Like, mm. I don't care what you believe, you know what I mean? Um, but I just want to encourage people and love them and tell them that God loves them and, right. and just do that through music and yeah, any way I can, I guess. <laughs> so yes. like, it's very important to me. Right. So this, uh, you know, this pandemic, so for example, I, I, we are in the Philippines, so we've been in a lockdown for like last nine months. We are still in a lockdown. Oh, really? Yeah. So although now the things are a bit, little bit relaxed than before, but um, okay, especially in the start of the pandemic, when everything just got closed and uh, everything got locked down uh, and people start losing yeah. their, people start losing their jobs and, you know, there's no fuel, yeah. like, you know, And I think a lot yeah. of people were thinking, even myself, like, would there be a miracle, you know, some sort of a miracle to get out right. of this, you know? Um, so yeah. it's a, it's important uh, thing, like, especially this kind of uh, uh, time. Uh, Jennifer, have you experienced mm-hmm. uh, miracles in your, in your life? I have. Yeah, I definitely have. Um, I think even more recently, um, because I was um, I was working before, and um, I'm not currently working um, because I would I would do like a day job and also um, ignescent both. Um, and so obviously things have slowed down for the band because of the pandemic, and then I was also let um, go for my job. So um, financially. I was concerned, <laughs> obviously, um, like many, um, and a lot of things kept happening. Like I would receive money out of the blue and just at the time that I needed it. Mm. And so God has constantly been providing and it's, and it's happened at least three times since March. It's just insane, it, like in a good way. And so Um, yeah, God keeps providing. And to me, that's a miracle. I mean, it's, it's in a way that I hadn't expected. It just happened out of the blue. Like I didn't do anything. It just happened. Um, and um, another, I guess another two examples um, is I was looking for a job like this was like three years ago or three and a half years ago. But um, I had a job that was um was not good, I guess. And I just, it was, it was causing me a lot of pain because it was very physical and it, there was just some issues. I had hurt my back and all that. Um, so I had, um, I'm like, I can't take this. So I've never done this before. I usually, I quit before finding another job. And so I, normally I would find a job first, but <laughs> so anyways, I quit, I got in the car right after I quit. And then a, an agency, like an employment agency called me literally when I sat down and I haven't talked to this employment agency in years. And they said, you know what, do you want, um, do you, are you looking for a job? I'm like, yes, I am. And they're like, do you want to go on this interview? I'm like, yep. So I went on the interview and then I like, I think it was in a few days. And then the next day I got the job. And so that was pretty, uh, pretty incredible. <laughs> like, right. um, and again, I, I was, I prayed about it and it's like, God just answered that prayer. Right. Um, so it was just, it's just insane. And And there's others. I don't know how much time we have. I don't want to like <laughs> take up too much time <laughs> because I could talk for hours about this. Right, but right. Uh, <laughs> but um, there is also I have a daughter and I went through a custody battle and um, and there's just a lot of I'll just give you a very quick synopsis. But it's also on YouTube. You can look it up and hear the whole story. Um, but yeah, basically, like my I had a lawyer and he was against me and then. Um, The, uh, my ex-husband's lawyer was against me. It was just all this crazy stuff that happened. And so I decided, or decided to fire my lawyer. And then um, the judge said, basically, you have five minutes to represent yourself. Um, and so I literally had, had went in the back room of the courthouse. And then we came back and had um, had to quickly like prepare and just pray and, um, and um, fight for my daughter like without a lawyer and it was so it was by myself without a lawyer against mm. a lawyer <laughs> and that was just like insane um and um I went uh home that night and then came back the next day and then the judge just said you know what um I was really thinking about this like I couldn't sleep all night and um 
And then he went through all these points and he basically, yeah, he said, I, I, I get to keep my daughter and, and I won the court case against all odds because all these lies were being spread about me. So, and to sum it up, yeah, there's been a lot of miracles in my life and, um, and God has proved himself very real to me. So. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the thing that you talk about that, uh, uh, you've been provided, uh, even though like, you know, you, so I, I always think about this court of Jesus saying like, you know, uh yeah. look at the birds they don't care about like they don't think about tomorrow they they don't they don't like because they 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 they've been taken care of right you remember that right right so so yes, you yes. just have to believe and you just have to have faith and you will be taken care of right so yeah yeah definitely i love right. that verse that is so true that is so yeah. true and yeah if you put god first and yeah and um just obey him and love him yeah he will take care of you always so yeah right <clears throat> so uh jennifer so you recorded your first uh, first album in 20 uh, first ep in 2011 right uh yeah yeah that was the first ep mm-hmm. yeah so can you yeah, tell me a little we, bit about i think i love the song calling out to you that was your like first song yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, that was the one that we actually um it was crazy like um I I love the band The Letter Black and um someone had actually given me their CD and I was listening to it and I'm like I love these songs and I was wondering like who um who produced their music and recorded them because the I just loved the way they sounded and everything. And so I was following them. I think it was on maybe Facebook or Instagram in or twitter and they put oh we're we're recording with Eric today and i'm like oh my gosh i have to work with this guy Travis <laughs> and um and i figured you know what i'm going to give it a shot and give him a call or send him an email and figuring he'd never respond in a million years you know <laughs> but um yeah to my amazement he responded and he's like can you come i I think he said, can you come in like two weeks? I'm like, yes, I can come. <laughs> Or we can come, <laughs> we can record. So we went to Knoxville, um, Tennessee and recorded Calling Out to You, uh, Run to Me and Who We Are. And that was just like an incredible experience. It was so crazy. And um, he, like, he pushed me vocally so much in a way that I've never been pushed before and um, just got like vocally got things out of me that I didn't think I could do. And um, so it was really, It was really really cool and then um that song calling out to you um got to co-write with uh, ben kasica of skillet who was a former league guitarist he's not i think skillet anymore but he was for many many years right um so yeah we got to um just so i got to sit down with him and um side by side and just um like co-write um and go back and forth and write the song together uh before recording it so that was really cool right so uh So preparing for this interview, I've been listening to Ignacent music for some time now. So I even yesterday when I was like going out, I would just put all the songs in Spotify. So one of the songs oh. that I really love, started loving is uh, Come Alive. Uh, oh. <laughs> pretty amazing song. Yeah. Can you tell me about that song? Yeah. Yeah. We actually uh, recorded that with Eric Labrosse and went to Wisconsin, um, Menominee Falls, I think it is, at Cherry Pit Studios. So it's literally like two and a half hours from from us. So it's not that far at all. Um, so yeah, we went there. Um, that uh, song, it was just kind of inspired by, honestly, um, by God and just... Um, and my faith and um, talking about how Jesus like makes us come alive. Um, and that's just, that's kind of inspiration. But um, yeah, I just started having this melody in my head for come alive, come alive over and over and over. And I'm like, I gotta write this, I gotta write this. We have to record this. Um, so yeah, so we did. And uh, we recorded a bunch of songs actually with Eric. Um, we were there for a while and released that that CD um, with uh, Angel in the Dark, I think is on it and some other songs. Um, mm. So yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, you, what sort of covers do you, 
I know you do very few covers. Uh, I've seen the vi- I seen this video of uh, I I I've listened to the cover you did on YouTube, the Pride in the Name of Love. Uh, oh yeah. So do you do other covers as well? We don't do a lot, honestly. Good. We're wanting to. We're we're trying to like figure out one that we all agree on because we all have different ones we want to do. So hopefully we'll agree on one soon. <laughs> But um, yeah, um, we have done what was, oh diamonds by Rihanna. We did that uh, for a little while, but obviously like a harder rock version of that. So we've done that. We've done the U two one. Um, I've done a few like uh, myself just vocally online. But as far as a band, that's I think that's the only uh, only one we did. And there was another one. Oh yeah, Carry On My Wayward Son. We used to do. Um, that cover too. Right. And we actually, funny story about that. We did that when we were opening for Striper at Tailgaters, not knowing that they do the same exact cover. So we opened <laughs> for them, like played right before that, and then and did our version. <laughs> and then they uh, did, you know, they played their set and they played their version. I'm like, oh, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean the YouTube, YouTube, the 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 version you did is very very great because uh, one of the bands that I saw uh, just before the pandemic uh, because YouTube had a Asian tour so they were here in Manila, uh, December, I think it was December 2019 just before the you know just few months before the pandemic started, so that was amazing oh, wow. experience. Cool. So what you guys did with that song is also amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Right. Yeah, they're an amazing band. I love you. It's it's really a big band. big shoes to fill, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Huge. Yeah. Very huge. Yeah. Well, right. We were honored to be able to cover that song. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one of your uh, songs that you sort of broke uh, went more uh, got more popular is one of your songs is into the night right so um yeah can you tell me a little bit about into the night yeah um well i had actually heard i think it was spoken and um i heard their new album and memphis mayfire one of their albums and again like i'm always a obsessed like who who records these songs and who who produces these and um I loved um I just loved that album and and what was done with the recordings and all that and um so I found they worked with uh with Memphis Mayfire he's worked with um Sleeping with Sirens um Maddie Mullins on a solo project um he's worked with um Uh, Danny Warsnop too of Asking Alexandria and just a bunch of amazing famous artists mm. and um, so yeah I, I actually contacted him and back and you know I asked him would he be interested in in recording some songs with us like Into the Night and um, and just uh, working with us and he said yes so I'm like oh thank god I'm so excited and so he came out to Chicago actually and we got to record with him and it was just an awesome experience and he definitely brought um, such like different ideas because we wanted to try something different and you know and get a little bit different sound than like the older stuff than calling out to you and all that and um with more electronic sounds and just um just shaping that a little bit different and so he helped us um shape the that song and um so that was just a really cool really cool experience um just recording with him and um so yeah we released that and it got a lot of attention like it it got top 10 on christianrock.net Um, and then we did a music video and, um, and it got on some, you know, on radio and all that, but, um, the music video got on a lot of different platforms that I was really surprised. Um, it was, um, on NBC in West, I think West Palm Beach, Florida, I actually got an NBC, the music video. So that was really, really exciting. Um, it got on, um, like on Roku and on cable networks and, um, 
different um, outlets like that, um, up to like 5 million viewers and um, also different, uh, like really good websites, Metal, uh, I can't remember the name of it, Metal something, but, um, and yeah, so it just, it like, it kind of blew up and I was, I was super, um, super excited about that. Right. <laughs> so we're, yeah, we're definitely blessed. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> So I think one of the other songs that came out uh, also is uh, Demon 777. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like song that I, I didn't expect from you guys, but <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 777 meaning God, right? Exactly. The opposite of 666. <laughs> yeah. God's number. <laughs> I wasn't sure if people got that or not, but yeah, that's why. <laughs> right. So yeah. what's that song about and how was the response for to that song? Um, that song is just about a bunch of different things. Like I, um, I, um, I struggled with um, someone who basically mentally abused me um, and um, struggle with a lot of different things like anxiety, depression. And um, I know Ian, uh, I know he'd be okay with me saying this, um, it's, you know, struggles and his struggle with anxiety, depression too. Um, so, and I know a lot of people do. And um, so that's, that's like, um, it's talking about letting go of our demons. And so it's just about like, all these things that we go through and the things that I've gone through and, and um, all of us have gone through and just letting go and uh, giving that to God and, um, and not letting those demons hold us back anymore and, um, and pressing on and moving forward, no matter what we go through. And um, yeah, that we can let go of our demons and have that, that confidence and just move forward and not let that hold us back. So there was a really good response to that song. And um, we always play that as the last song, at least as of now in our set. And um, yeah, people really, really enjoy that song. And um, it's just a really neat song to connect with people in the audience. And um, yeah, so it's a lot of fun. It's one of my favorites that we've ever done, honestly. Right, right. <clears throat> So um, other than playing in Ignis and writing songs, singing, uh, I know that you also do a little bit of acting as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I've done. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Tell me about your acting career. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's actually uh, like a, a lot of filming. I mean, not right now, obviously, with the pandemic, uh, but there was, and hopefully there will be soon again in the Chicago area. Um, and so, yeah, I got to be like an Empire um, Empire TV show. So that was really cool. Um, actually, our church, oddly enough, did some uh, uh, a movie, The Resurrection of Gavin Stone. And so I got to be... Um, just in the audience for that, just like an extra. So that was kind of cool. Um, and my daughter as well. And then um, there's also, um, we were filming um, a film in Wisconsin actually uh, with someone I know. And so I did some acting with that and, um, and in a commercial. And um, so, yeah, that's been a lot of fun. I love acting and um, I definitely want to pursue that more. Um, and, and do more of that, hopefully in the future. Um, but yeah, so that's that's just been a lot of fun venturing out and doing that. Right. Um, I read from your profile, you actually have an Oscar nomination? I have what? Uh, uh, Oscar nomination. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah, from the Chicago Oscars, yeah, yeah. That right. was... I think that was a year ago, maybe two years ago. I'm trying to remember now, but I think it was 2019. The, um, yeah, the Chicago um, Oscar board nominated me. So that was really cool. And I got to go um, and uh, accept that nomination in person and um, at a, like a red carpet, they called it a word event in 
in Chicago. So that was really cool. And um, I also got to sing a song because I'm also a solo artist and um, and written a few songs just under my name, Jennifer Benson. So mm -hmm. there's a song I wrote called Elohim and I got to sing that there too. And um, so, yeah, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so the the song that I, as I said, I discovered you from um, the song Exodus because also because that had an amazing video. So uh, whose idea was the video that, uh, who directed that video? For Exodus? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, Ian, the bassist in Ignescent, his brother recorded it and videoed it and helped direct it. So he's like, he's super, super talented. Um, Sean Sebastian is, um, is Ian's brother. So yeah, like we all came up with different ideas. Like Ben, um, the drummer in the band had some ideas. I had some ideas. Jose had ideas of what we wanted to do. Uh, Ian did as well. And then uh, Sean did too. So, but what we all kind of agreed on that we absolutely wanted to do was to shoot it at the Joliet prison. And so we contacted them and uh, thankfully uh, set a date and they let us shoot there. And so that was just super cool because there's just so many uh, different things that have been shot there, like Blues Brothers and um, so many like iconic films and different people have shot there. So that was really cool. So yeah, so we got to go like um, and shoot there and we got to go in the prison cells and, um, and it was just, it was a lot of fun. Um, so it was a really cool experience. Right. <clears throat> so uh, what you've been uh, up to recently with the pandemic, you've been, uh, are you guys writing new songs? Uh, what's the plan? Will there be new songs coming out? Yeah, actually, we just wrote a new song called Anymore. And we uh, also just recorded it. And uh, Nick Radanovic, who has worked with Skillet, and he's also worked with... Um, on Jeremy, a uh, song for Jeremy Camp's movie, I Still Believe. Um, and then he's worked with a bunch of other artists too, but he's um, actually helping us with that song um, as well as uh, Jeremy Valentine. It's kind of like a group effort in Brandon Wolf. Um, so yeah, we um, that's almost done. So we're hoping to release that hopefully in a month or so. Um, and actually it's a ballad. So we're, we're super excited about that. And um, we also started writing uh, a few new songs. Um, we have about three new ones and we're gonna be recording that again with Cameron Mazel. He will be here in Chicago in a few weeks and we're gonna be recording with him, a uh, brand new EP. So hopefully um, that, I don't know when we'll be releasing that probably in the spring, I'm hoping, maybe April or May. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the plan. And then once things start opening up more, we'll definitely be doing some shows uh, as well. So, and then we do have another announcement, but I can't announce that yet. So <laughs> kind of stay tuned right. for that one. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> So uh, yeah. Jennifer, what's your message to your people who support you, the, listen to your music? Uh, I would just say, I know times are crazy for literally the whole world. I, I, I never imagined this would happen. None of us would, but just um, hang in there, stay strong because we'll get through it. It will be over, things will get better. Um, nothing will ever be perfect, obviously, but just hang in there. Um, because God loves you. He sees what you're going through. He sees you, he sees your pain and he will help you. And um, yeah, just know that we love you and that God loves you. Right. <clears throat> um, anybody you want to shout out to? Um, yeah, I would do a shout out, well, to Ian, Sebastian uh, of Ignacen and uh, Jose Jimenez. Ben Silverman, um, my uh, Tim Benson, uh, Ron Sebastian, which is Ian and, uh, Ian's dad. He helps us a lot at the shows, and he's just amazing, uh, supportive man. And um, yeah, Cameron Mazel and um, um, helping us. Travis Wyrick, Nick Rodanovic, um, 
uh, Sean, Sebastian, and just everyone um, and our family and all our friends, um, everyone who has supported us and helped us uh, just through all this. We, yeah, we appreciate you guys and we love you. All right. So Jen, thank you for joining the podcast. It's uh, uh, I'm glad that we had this talk and uh, keep making uh, very inspirational, uh, you know, uh, inspirational, but cool music because you guys do both, you know, you put a positive message out, but make it cool as well. So, <laughs> so a lot of people can enjoy mm -hmm. it. So lastly, can tell everyone how they can uh, follow you on social media and how they can access your music. Yeah, definitely. Um, you can check our website out at www.ignescentmusic.com. So that's just I-G-N-E-S-C-E-N-T music.com. But um, the best way is to go on social media and everything is under Ignescent Music. So you can go on Instagram, which is at Ignescent Music, Twitter at Ignescent Music, Facebook, uh, just type in Ignescent, but it's uh, at Ignescent Music as well. Um, we're on TikTok to, um, what else? Oh, Snapchat under Ignescent. And then our music is on iTunes, on Amazon music. Um, you can listen to us on Spotify. That's a great way to listen to us. Um, we're on YouTube as far as like our music videos. Um, and, um, just pretty much every platform you can think of, but yes, Spotify is definitely the best way to listen or else download, a, you know, our songs on iTunes. Right. <clears throat> so thank you, Jennifer. So have a great evening. <laughs> thank you too. Thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun. Yes. Thank you.